Hello guys, this is Vinod from Mind Magics, and I welcome you all to second part of the special Power BI series in which our trainer will explain everything you need to know about the Power BI. Before beginning the session, make sure you watch the first part we have covered. Check the link in the caption. In the second part, let us look at the topics you will cover. We shall start with Connecting and Shaping Data Connectivity and Shaping Power BI Data from the SQL Server How the Power Query Editor Works Tables Transformations Group By Parameter Custom Column and Split Data Please check the caption to jump between the topics. If you are new to the Mind Magics channel, please subscribe and press the bell icon to get quick updates about the new tech tutorials, free webinars, and career enhancing shorts from working professionals. Without any further delay, let's start the video. So let's see. I do have Power BI desktop. So by the time it's open, like we will have to, you know, create a dashboard from the scratch today and we will understand the data which is available with us and then we will try to make the connectivity from the Power BI desktop to the data sources. So for this exercise uh, in the Power BI, we have to create a dashboard from the scratch and I will try to make the connectivity of the Power BI data from the SQL Server. Initialize it is uh, taking little time, but once it is open, then creating a new dashboard or new page is not take much time. So uh, by the time our Power BI uh, is open, we will also connect to SQL Server database, which is there with us. I have SQL Server. I have to open the SQL Server Management Studio. Then this is the Power BI Desktop. So first look of the Power BI Desktop. We have to create a new dashboard. Okay. So whenever I need to create a new dashboard, I just uh, don't want to open any specific uh, dashboard first. I will just close this one. And this is create a untitled dashboard. I have to first save it. So for this, I will create project. Say here, I'll just create a project folder. You know, I'll just keep my dashboard. Okay, so just copy this folder path and here I will just save it. Save this dashboard to that particular location and the dashboard name I will give as uh, say retail dashboard. Okay, because I have the retail data in place uh, with me, so we will use it. This is a blank dashboard. So let us first understand the features of the Power BI. As I say, this you know your filter panel. This is all the visualizations, and these are the fields or the data which is needed. Because now you see here, there is no data or fields available. It is evident that we have not connected to any data source as of now. So in order to start with, I have to connect with a new data source. So before we connect to new data source and do the necessary transformations, let us go back to the SQL Server and understand what are the tables available with us. We have to first understand the data structure, the tables, the relationships, and then here in Power BI, we can make a connectivity to those data. So let's go to SQL Server, which I have opened parallelly here database SQL Server is a relational database management system 
when you need to connect to SQL Server, you have to give the host name of the system. Username is default uh, installation username is SA and password is the password which we have set at the time of installation. So these are the listed databases available with us. I do have this order DB order database where I have various tables over here. I can see the list of the tables available with me. Now let us understand the table structure. This is a customer table. Whenever you need to see the data of this table, just right click over here and select top thousand rows. So these are the table data of customer table. Here customer uh, table contain the customer related information or the basic information of the customer. The primary key or the unique column of this table is a customer ID. So this is the primary key or the unique column. In other fields the data might be repeated like division it is a repetitive data and uh, company name also can be repeated there is a probability but the customer id never be repeated because this is a unique id so against this customer id all the customer information is available same way other tables are also interconnected to each other i will just take a look here this is our table and just trying to search the data of the order table. Now you will see in the order table we have a unique ID of the order table is order ID. Whereas we do have a customer ID which is also present in this table. Okay. So how come customer ID is present with this order table? Because this customer ID is a foreign key or the reference key of the customer in the order table. This key field of customer ID is going to be helpful for connecting customer table with order table. By means of this customer ID, since there's a reference of the customer, customer ID is present in this table for customer ID. So this data, both the data of these tables are common. So based on this field, we can make a connectivity. Now, the same way other tables are also interrelated. Order table uh, having order ID, whereas in order detail also you would find one order ID is there. So, this field is a relationship field to the order table. So, order detail table is also connected to order table by means of this order ID field. So I'm not going to with all the field or tables and the fields because I know all the tables are same way interconnected. You see employee ID over here from order table employee ID is a unique key field of employee table which makes this two table employee and order relation. Same way customer ID making a relationship to customer table and product ID making a relationship to here we have a product ID in the product table and in the order detail table also we have a product ID. So that means the order detail table is connected to product table. Alright, so this way these uh, tables are relational we understood. Now it is time to make a connectivity from Power BI to SQL Server. So now I'll go to Power BI. First of all, very first activity I will have is to connect Power BI with main data source. So we have various, uh, you know, approach to connect right from the field. You can get data and add data to your report right from here. Also, you can connect to this or else you can go to this, you know get data and from here you can connect to SQL Server. So right click and make a relationship to SQL Server. So I am going to 
connect this to SQL Server, it is just asking me the option, the server name. So remember, when I have connected to SQL Server, in the SQL Server also, it asks me the host name of my laptop. Now SQL Server is installed in my local machine. That's why I had to give the host name. And otherwise, I can also give uh, the host name which is local host, which is a generic name. If I give local host, that will by default mean to my host local host name. So database name I can give, or else it is optional. So you can leave it as it is. Now data connectivity mode. So what is a direct query and input? So if you want to make a direct query. Uh, you have to put a query here, query for uh, views or store procedure and then the data will be fetched from the uh, Power BI. But I have to import the data tables to Power BI and in the front end I will make the relationship. So these are all the optional parameters. I will just you know, go with this import. Now, one more difference is I will also tell you the direct query and import means. In import, uh, you know, the data will be connected uh, from Power BI to SQL Server in a disconnected approach. Like one of the offline data source will be created in import uh, case. So every time we do uh, uh, any filtration and all that will be imported, uh, that will be visible from that Power BI data source file whereas direct query means it will always be act as a live connections so it will be always depending on the data source so that's not a good approach i will just make it import so i have made it and order db i have selected and list of the tables i can choose so i will write from here i will list out the tables the tables which I want it to the Power BI. These are all the tables. Now I can go to directly load or I can go to transform data. So uh, all these tables are selected. Before I load them to the Power BI, I have to go to transform the data. Because Power BI is also act as a somewhat uh, you know ETL uh, mechanism ETL in, in ETL phenomenon also it works so when the data is loaded this process we call as extraction so we have extracted this data from the data source this is what we have the extraction is now the next approach is the transformation so we have to do the transformations of the data that uh, power BI power query section. So we have an option called a power query to which we can do the necessary transformations on the data. So but in this particular session we will uh, give emphasis on the power query section. Now, after transformations we have to load the data to the front end layer that is what we call as a data visualization layer. So as I said data extraction data transformations and data loading all three activity is going to be performed in the power page that's why it is also working on the ETL phenomenon so including all these selected tables I will just take these tables to the transformation window or power query editor so as you see this editor in the title it is listed as power query editor Preview may be up to 48 days old. So I've just loaded this data. I will just refresh it. That means the data will be refreshed from the database, and here it will be act as a ETL tool. Here we have a necessary transformations, and uh, uh, we will apply those transformations on these tables. So before I 
you know, go for visualizations. I have to do the necessary transformations with this Power Query Editor. So this Power Query Editor is uh, different from the Power BI uh, Designer, UI Designer. So this is not a UI Designer part. This is the backend activity which we have to perform. So the necessary backend activity we will perform is say we will start with each table say we do have a customer table and in the customer table what changes i can do uh, company name i can simply change this name of this field to customer name customer contact name contact person contact person so you see whatever the changes we have applying on this it is just creating a you know applied step or creating a log on this so i can also go back to the previous state if i don't want to perform these changes or commit these changes address city uh, customer so what i'll do i'll just you know sequence the field this customer id is in the middle of this uh, table i'll just take it to the first column so remember whatever the changes we are doing in this power bi power query editor it is you know doing changes to the power bi data source which is, which is a logical data source created in the power bi front end this is no more be impacted to the physical data source of our sql server okay This is very crucial. Country division we have. I'll just uh, take uh, you know uh, and keep this data sequentially. Say first contact person, then uh, division name. I'll simply name it as division. Country, then uh, state we have also state province. state uh, data is not for all the countries but anyway i'll just keep it over here say division country state uh, instead of province i'll simply use a state city address and other fields so here i have to define or decide that what all fields might not be necessary for me for visualization so i can just remove them I'll simply choose this column. I don't want this fax column to be displayed anywhere in my report. So I'll simply remove it, remove column. So you see, the column has been removed. Now, whatever the changes I did, it is the reorder, uh, rename, reorder, etc. Finally, remove the column. So there is all activity are being recorded here in this applied step. If you want to go back, simply remove it and you'll get your fax column back. All right, so postal code, uh, division, ID, this is also not there because division itself is in there in our table. So, so in order to make our data sheet or data source of Power BI, uh, you know, lightweight, I will just apply those fields which is really required for the analytics. Okay, customer names, see this customer names, it cap, that's fine, all right. Okay, same way employee in the employee table I have employee first name last name name I can the name would be changing to employee last name I will remove it first name I will remove higher date this date has to be formatted as per the as for the analytics now you see this date format is not proper so I'll just click here. Now right click on this and here you can format it. So these are the necessary transformations. So transform to quarter, month, week, etc. etc. So I'll just uh, text transformations. I'll give date only, not time. Now you see this data is seems to be proper okay now uh, earlier this data source in our data source we do have our date and time
and this format is also not user friendly format like year month and date is defined over here what i will i have done i simply click on this right click on this and transform and made it to only date and i can also change it to in the different uh, way like change type to uh, date time as well and only time also if you see only time uh, that has been also so i so will just change it to uh, date okay so now this is proper date format all right now what are the changes we have done here is higher date been modified same way resignation date also i will do the changes on this right click transform and date only perfectly created year salary i'll just make it uh, you know, salary okay small small steps so this is title i'll just change it to designation these are the fields now you see the data type of these fields are also indicated in the icons now the icon you see one two three is icon of numeric uh, data calendar is icon of the date type abc is for the textual data and currency symbol dollar sign is for the money uh, type of data so this data is with you know showing us money all right so this is good now moving on to invoice so same way i will do the necessary transformations going forward i will transform date only and this is date only fine this is shipment date i'll make it date only Uh, this is all detail table. Now I do have this, uh, you know, quantity, uh, order ID, and unit price. I'll just make it as a price, simply price. Okay, the ID here. I'll just select this order date, and in this order date also would be transform as date only super id no more required because super is there in the table itself so so what i can do here i will just make a duplicate of this order table so right click and duplicate see I just want to name this table as zipper, okay? And zipper, I will keep it, keep it here. It's a zipper table, all right? Now on this table, I will remove all these fields except this zipper information because zipper ID was by default added in the odd table. So what I'll do? I'll select all these columns, remove columns. And I have super ID and super is maintained over here. And in the order table, I will not keep this super and remove column. Only super ID is there. So this will be a relationship to super table. In super table, we do have super uh, ID and super name. So so what changes I did? I just make a duplicate. This is also a type of transformations. I have removed the column from the super column from the order table and, and make another table for making relationship to order. Now you here you see one thing I'm noticing here there are duplicate zippers. Okay, this is also one type of transformation I am showing you here. Super ID is three, 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 three. There are many threes are there because it is a, a primary key is going to be the primary key of this table. I should not have repetitive data in the table. So whereas I can notice, I am noticing the repetitive data in this table. What I can do, 
I will just select this uh, corner, right corner. I don't want to select a particular column. So here there is a transformation called remove duplicates. Because we have three, five, all those are duplicates, as well as the super names are duplicate, I make it remove duplicate. So since I have removed the duplicate fields, I can notice that I have only five zippers in my table. One is quick shipping, no universal zipper export, and these are all the zipper names. Fine. So very easily I could create one more table called as a zipper. Okay. Now moving on to next in the order table, we had a in the order detail table, right? It was a zipper uh, in the order table. Yeah, super ID and the super ID will make a relationship. Okay, now coming to product table, uh, product ID is there, product table fields are there. Okay, the unit of measurement, uh, UOM is unit of measurement. I will just name it as unit for understanding. Status is invoiced. So now, how many status are there? Only invoiced is there. There is no other. Status is also defined. Now, salesperson. Salesperson is is also an employee. A, actually, an employee. So, what I can do? Salesperson, sales title. So, I'll simply name it as. So let's let it be sales title. Otherwise, that would be connected. That might be connected with the that other table, employee table. Okay. So, these are the tables. These are the tables being sales employee sales ID. Sales person. Now, uh, actually, one relationship has been created. This is employee ID in the order table, and which makes the relationship to employee table. And this is employee sales ID, which is actually the salesperson ID. So, what I can do is just um, take it. And in the salesperson table, I will rename this field actually. So this will make a relationship to this table. Employee salesperson ID. So here employee and salesperson are become different for me. Alright, so this data is proper. Now let's see what uh, uh, other changes we can make here. I can see in the discount there is some unusual data is also showing. So what I can do, I will change type to percentage. But if I'm making percentage, it is becoming too unusual. So I'll simply change this to remove that and change type to I can see some of the discounts uh, after say 5.0115 and there is an E plus 13 some garbage data is being added so what I can do I just have to make it uh, you know transform so let's do one thing after a three character one two three the rest of the data will be removed so what I can do So here I just want to keep this data perfect, not with this garbage data. So I should be, uh, I want this 5, uh, here this should be 5.0, okay, not this E, I want this should be 2.0, like that. So right click here, there is an option called as split column transformation. So this split column transformations will separate the garbage data 
and keep our data filter in this column so uh, so click on this and i want to split this column with the delimiter no by number of characters yes by number of characters by position okay so we'll say example i will just change it to delimiter okay so after delimiter it will be removed so i don't want the delimiter should be there so it should be dot comma each occurrence of the delimiter left most delimiter not comma it should be say colon space cap sign so i just make it dot okay. after dot so all the data will be removed also delimiter it is e okay after e what is the data is there it will remove I think it does not properly work. I'll just remove this column and the discount column again. I will just split it by dot custom and dot after dot. This will be removed. I think this has to be converted to string first. So here, change type to so of whole number, make it text. Okay, so this data is actually a text data. This count is showing like this 50%, 8%. Okay, so now what I can do, I will just keep two characters. And remove all the data. So split column by number of characters. I'll keep it two two characters once as per left as possible. Now you see. Now see this data has been properly transformed. Twenty five percent, fifty percent. This is fifty percent and all. Now this has been split it. Now I can just remove this column. I don't I no more report this. So this field it is discount. Now I can just change it to numeric. Okay. So change this to change type to this has become whole number now. That's fine. Okay. Whole number. 25%, 15%, 10%, that's a perfectly has been transformed. So this was really need uh, helpful for me. This is quantity, this is product ID, shipment date and price. Now one more column I may need. All right, so uh, I let us transform this and we will add the columns in the DAX scripting. So what I can do, this is uh, fine now. And same way in the order table, let's see what left for the transformations. Product or names are capital. Okay, that's fine. So all these product names are too long. What I can do, I can just uh, you know, make a standard length of this uh, product names. Say, for example, so let's make it uh, 18 characters or 15 characters length of each product. Okay, let's make it 20 characters because minimum length I can see the 20 characters of the products. So this product name should not be too lengthy. What I can do, uh, I can just apply this transformation, split column again by length number of characters right so if you want i have shown you uh, to 
split the column by delimiter because in the last discount field we have applied by delimiter and here I want to make it 20 character length and rest of the data will be discarded. So what I can do, what do you mean by this uh, split once as far as left as possible, as far left as possible, once as far right as possible. So from right it will be selected 20 then left data will be discarded or if it is repetitive then if you have 100 character data it will be 5 20 20 20 it will be 5 columns so i want only left data will be there as far as possible so 20 character will be kept and the rest of the data will be discarded means it will be formed as a second column yellow was not worked actually all right so let me just consider two more characters. Right click, or else you can select here split column by character 22 character, not repetitive. Just choose this, and it's fine for me now. All the data are replaced. Okay, this is just for example, actually, just to show you. Uh, how we can split by delimiter, how we can split by specific length. So, I really don't have intention to remove it because the product name should be there as it is, otherwise, there will not be uh, meaningful data. All right, just to understand, salespersons, suppose you want to cre uh, create one more column with the uh, you know first name of the salesperson. If a salesperson name is there, you can just make a duplicate, duplicate column, and from here split the column by delimiter here, not by position, not by anything else. The split by delimiter space. Leftmost delimiter that means the first name will be taken up, and other will be discarded. Okay leftmost data has been created to the first column and rightmost data is added to the second column we can make it first name last name okay like this as treated by space because space is the one delimiter like this i can just create the salesperson first name salesperson last name same way from the employee also i can i have just you know this remove those columns but i can keep it as well fine uh, so this is uh, what we have is the basic features the features most of the features we have cover up in this uh, our query editor now uh, i just also want to add uh, some more data to our data source uh, before that let me just save it actually so apply save if you want to apply then it will be applied if you want to close and apply then also you can close and apply it so just apply don't i'm not closing it so once i apply it you see there's a load statement uh, is running. What this load statement is uh, doing behind the scenes, it is uh, storing this change data to the Power BI data source file, a Power BI data source, which is a logical entity and uh, shaped in the front end only. So this is not going to be impacted to our real data set, uh, real database uh, tables. Every time you do any changes, this would be so it's detecting the relationship as you can see. Uh, it was loaded and then imported, and now it is detecting the relationship. Now, in addition to the SQL Server data, we will also add few more data which is there in Excel sheet as well. So, I do have one uh, other data in the excels as well 
okay, here the resources. So how I can add some more tables to this? So just go to new source Excel workbook. Choose the Excel workbook and select this. And here it is about to extract the data to Power BI. Now here we have two column tables uh, region and survey. So this also we will take it to Power BI. Okay. So now you see in this data we have got region which is okay uh, something to notice here region and this is survey. Now this data I have fetched from the Excel sheet. In Excel, sometime what happened, the data which is the first row or first, uh, you know, which is the column name is identified as the first row of the table, which is not correct, right? The field name of this table is region, sub-region as uncountry. Whereas, in, uh, instead of making these fields, as attribute name, it has been by default taken to the data. So I just want to make these three data region, sub region, and country as a field name of this table or the column name of this table. How, how I can do it? So there is a transformation available here in the Power BI is called as a use first row as header. Click on this. When you click on this, use first row as a header, this will be treated as a header. Okay, header. For reverse, you have also option use header as a first row. Okay, so I have done it now. Region is available, sub regions is available, and country names are also available. So this country can be make a relationship with the country of customer table. Some of the country might name might be same, so the relationship can be formed in the survey table uh, in the in the region table. Okay, so what next? I can see some of the data uh, is having some, some of the country is having dots, right, in this. So I can just do the transformations like this is a, this, I just want to remove those data. Okay, like this. Delimiter. Left most and then comma. So this uh, data is are removed and this field is in fine tune. So this is proper transform now. Alright, in the survey table, same way. Here also we will remove because this field names was supposed to be same in both the cases. Split column by delimiter, select most delimiter, comma. Okay. This field also being removed. And this name is now country. Okay, so they're all fine. So the necessary transformations I will do is so the changing of the field name, transmit railways, passenger cars, so survey data has to be useful for us. In this mobile phone subscribers. So this is the category has been defined: transmit and uh, mobile phone. 
subscribers that why that is fine internet users mortality mortality under uh, you know health expenditure uh, or not so mortality is one health expenditure per capita so these fields i don't uh, other fields health expenditure total uh, i can just remove this i don't want population total population this one field uh, is called as population urban urban population and uh, i think it's rural population. okay population birth rate life expectancy okay let it be let the field be there population between age you know this is the percentage of the population percentage of the total so this data can be useful for us for making uh, you know your pie charts all right so this has been created so we have got proper data for us now it's time to uh, just save our data close and apply So I'll simply click on this. Now we have got Excel data in place, and we have got SQL Server data in place with us. So now you see the data which has been added to our data model is now readily available. So in our data model, these are the customer table with the proper data because customer ID, customer contact person, etc., etc. We have made the sequence as per our requirement. The order table, say uh, order ID was supposed to be there in the first. So if you want to do the changes, you cannot simply take the order ID to the first column, right? So you have to go back to the our query editor. So here in the power query editor, go to customer, uh, go to order uh, table. Now if you want to do the changes. So I do have this order ID is is the primary key of my table. So I have to keep it first, right? Key invoice and invoice table. Order weight is a field will be useful for us. Order weight. Okay, this is this much kg. Okay, order weight seven thousand kg means seven ton. So all our data are perfectly uh, done and applied to the Power BI. If you want to do the changes, because I only did changes in the order table, so the changes has been applied to our Power BI. Data source file. Now you see the relationship. Let us understand the relationship which is being created behind the scenes automatically, beautifully. The relationship is created in the Power BI. Let's have a look into this. All the tables are now relational or in, and interrelated to each other. Okay. Okay, why not these two tables are connected with the order table? My expectation was there to connect the reason table and survey table like this. Say, for example, I will connect this uh, country with this table. I just want to make a relationship. Okay, now here customer tables, country field, and reason tables, country field. So I'll just make it. Okay, the relationship has been formed, and then this country will be related to survey table based on country and country. That's fine. So 
all these tables of the data are connected to each other. This is how the Power Query editor works and how how useful it is. And this way we could create the data model of it. And uh, so let's see. So I just uh, connected uh, to my database and I've got all these tables. What I can do, I need to do some necessary transformations on this data to the Power Query editor. So click on this. You will go to the Power Query editor. So need to see like what other transformations we can use on this. We have already created a split column, use first row, remove column, you know, many things we have created. Suppose uh, this is address field. Like I would also like to show you the merge merge columns. So what I can do, uh, say um, you know, country, state, city, address, and postal code. So these all fields will be merged together and created a new field called address. Instead of having all this data, or say I'll just make it duplicate. Right click, and I'll just have to make it duplicate because if I will apply the merge transformations on this, it will be uh, it's a duplicate column. So it's creating one more country column, then. Uh, then we have also say uh, state column here. So I will as well uh, make it duplicate, duplicate column. So I have to make it one by one. City, I'll make it duplicate two. Then address, duplicate column. Postal code also duplicate. Now going forward, okay, I just want to make, uh, I just want to, uh, you know, avoid the duplicate records here. Say for example, duplicate records are years, year and month and all. So a duplicate records, I will just, I, there's one concept in Power BI called as a group by. So how I can apply group by on this data? I'll just choose year, which is has a high level, uh, you know, low granularity and it is data in the high level so what i can do group by rows in the table based on the values in the currently selected columns click on this currently selected column specify the number of you know the columns to group by and desired output okay the basic this is one the basic is okay this is order year then the column you can define and if you want to have more i think here i can have other groupings also so more groupings will be there say for example i will go with advanced as well as basic okay fine so first of all i would like to make a grouping so instead of you know creating on this table i will make a duplicate table how i can duplicate this entire table thus that provision is also there in power bi in the query editor so it will simply be a duplicate table I want to apply this grouping on a separate table, so I will just copy, you know, make a duplicate of this order table. Right click on this, copy and paste. So when I paste it, you would see uh, this data is there. Now I want year wise statistics on this. So for example, 2000, this order year is there. I will just make a uh, group by group by option in Power BI. I'll choose. First I will show the basic, then I will show the advanced as well. So group by order year, group by order month, whatever you want. So then now the number of column you wanted to have it here is say group by orders, count of rows, count of rows. Okay. 
against this particular uh, year how many rows are there so this is a very basic function there is no aggregation function we have it's basically count there is no uh, advanced aggregation functions we have so we we have only so say for example count of rows if you make it rows then th there is no specific column here if you make a distinct row also there is no specific column here so okay that's fine so count of rows order here number of orders number of orders so it's a basic group by functions we have in power bi now it's become a very simple table which is uh, having year wise number of orders so this is grouping feature so group by year secondly i will create one more function one more advanced concept of this group by i'll simply copy this and paste it now i will choose again the month and year so choose this column group by and it should be advanced this time i will uh, take advanced so add multiple groupings add multiple groupings so when we have order year then i will add order month okay order month and then i'll also have order uh, quarter then order month okay so all three groupings items will be there here then uh, the attributes the, the measures which i want should be number of number of orders so count of rows again if you want to have multiple measures here again that's also possible number of orders order weight there will there's one field called order weight so sum of order weight total order weight order weight by year so order weight be sum sum of what sum of there's a field called order weight i'll just choose this one so i've got two options first is a basic grouping in power query where i can simply choose one dimension and one major okay one dimension which i chosen in the last table is order year and then the measure is number of rows. Same way, in that one, so we have a little more feature. That is, you can have multiple uh, columns or dimensions. You can create in this, and you can create multiple measures. So first measure I have created here, number of order, which is count of rows, basically, and order weight is the sum of order weight. Let me find out if I can get any more other data. ID, no other dates are there, so I can just remove it, delete. No other measures uh, can be uh, there in this table, so I just have these two measures. All right, so let's see how it looks like. It will be represented very nicely here. I do have five years of data 2010 to 2015, probably. Yes, and their quarters. So, say for example, 2010. So, I've got 2010. If I select 2010 only, I have four quarters of data. 2010, one quarter data is not there, and then these are the months of data which I have it here. In 2013, I am having complete set of data. So I am getting 2013, quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four. All four quarters data are there. So I can just and then month January to uh, this thing is there. Sort ascending. It will make, make it sort ascending. So, okay. Alphabetically, it has been sort. So, I do have January, Dave, Dave, and all these data are there. Okay, so 12 data are there. So, this is what we have the standard basic and advanced grouping feature in Power BI. So, I can just make it as group by quarter and all right. So, this data are having two measures number of orders exactly. Uh, or all the months and then the weight the sum of weight of all the months so this is the aggregated data we have okay fine so okay one more concept is there in power bi is called as a parameter then i'm going to show you how we can create a parameter now what is the use of this parameter parameter is act as a variable and whenever you create any calculated column a conditional column this is like this i have created a conditional column and wherever you create any conditional column as per your selection the data will be keep on changing the calculation will be keep on changing say for example i would uh, create a gst is a value which is 
going to be our input for calculation and my total order price will be quantity into price and this price will be GST. Suppose for example, I am creating one more column, add custom column here, formula you can apply here, for example, quantity into price will be there, okay, this will be the custom column and the column name is order price, order price, okay, order price. So very easily I could create a custom column which is the order price. Now you see this is uh, say two quantities are there and this value is uh, price is 2500. So if you multiply this with two then you will get this, this is the order price. So you may go to any shop and order multiple item against one item suppose this price is 10 rupees and you have ordered five uh, item in that particular uh, product then it will be 50 rupees. Same way, we have the quantity of each product uh, and the price which is listed over here. Quantity of each item and the price is there. So, if you multiply that, I am getting this order price. Now, I, don't need, I just need to create one more field with the parameterized control. What I can do? First of all, I have to create a parameter. I will create a parameter and I will show you how we can create a list of an array of values and those values will be invoked in a conditional column in the Power BI. So whenever you change the parameter value in the front end, the data in the, in the, in the calculate column will be keep on changing. So this is what we can achieve through a parameter. So it's exactly look like a, act like a variable, but variable can be a single value here in parameter we can have a single as well as a list of or array of values. So manage parameter, put manage parameter and create a new parameter. It's very a powerful feature of Power BI. I will just give this parameter name as PRM or a prefix to identify a parameter I will give as PRM, GST or tax, simple tax, okay, PRM tax. I can have a single value as well have a multiple values. So type would be any. What type of value is this? It would be numeric or a decimal number or a text or a date. I will just make it as a decimal number. That means a numeric value can be there or a decimal value can be there. It can be 10, it can be 10.5, it can be 15.5 like that also. Tax. Now the tax will not be a single value. I just want to have a list of values list of values here so first percentage of the tax will be say five percent second would be seven and then ten percent twelve point five fifteen percent seventeen seventeen point five and twenty percent like this and uh, twenty two point five and then twenty five percent up to this twenty five percent the tax will be applies okay now this is the default value which you can choose say for 7 uh, 5 and then 7.5 could be like this so in 2.5 2.5 threshold i'm just uh, you know incrementing 5 then 2.5 then up 2.5 10 then 10 uh, 12.5 is 2.5 increment then 15 17.5 so in this uh, 2.5 uh, threshold or increment value, my uh, tax is getting defined. All right. So default value of my tax say would be 10%. Uh, okay. 10% will be the default value, and current value also I will choose 10%. All right. Now this is become a parameter. Whenever uh, you want to change a value in the parameter according to the parameter your data in the column will be keep on changing now this parameter is created and the default value which is visible is 10 percent all right in this table order price table i am going to add one more column which will be indicating uh, the inclusion of tax on top of the order price so Order price is the price which is quantity into price multiplication and on top of the order price I will have inclusion of the tax percentage. Okay. So 
ten percent of this will be showing in another column. So let's create it. I just want to have a art custom column, not conditional column. It's a custom column. Conditional column. I have also shown you how to create a conditional column. So multiple conditions can be uh, you know defined over here, and this column has been created. And this is what I can do is a custom column. In the column name I'm going to give is order price tax. Order price inclusive of tax. So I just want to show it here is order price, order price plus order price 10%. Okay, into point. This is a param PRM taxes here. So this will be the calculation here. Whatever the order price into point 10%. Will be 10 divided by 100. So this will be our calculation. See this PRM tax, the parameter tax. I am not giving a static value because this default value is 10 here. Now it will be 10 divided by 100 is 0.1, or this will be the calculation. Like suppose the order price is 200, then 200 into 10 plus 10 divided by 100 will be basically 20. Okay, and Order price is 200, so the total price inclusive of order will be 220. Same way, this calculation will be created. Now, I've created this column called as order price. Now, you see, uh, say for example, this one 3912 is the value, the 12% or 10% of this is 4300. Just wanted to check, say for example, 3912, 3912 into Point one, sorry, yes, plus three nine one two is how much is four three zero three? The total is a four three zero three. Perfect. So this is the uh, total value. This is the total value three nine one two, and this is the additional tax is three ninety, uh, which is ten percent of this three nine one two, and this total amount is becoming this much. The so formula is. 3912 into, for example, 10 divided by 100 is this much is the formula, and how we have calculated in the parameter is also same exactly like this. Okay, all right, so this is how we have created the parameterized conditional column. The conditional column which we have created is this one. The sorry, this is this is basically the Custom column. This is the conditional column. Custom column also we have added the parameterized value. So, for example, 4303 is a value over here. Just wanted to check if I'm changing the parameter value whether it is going to be changed or not. Suppose I'm going to change the parameter value to 15%. Now, let's see. Is it changing? 3912 was the earlier value. Now it is changed to 15%. So, it's become 4498. If I reduce it, if I reduce the 10% to 5%, let's see what happening. I'll go to the parameter, current value, and this one, so I'll change it to 5%. Tax. It's also changing. Earlier it was 3912, or it was 43 something, and it is reduced to 4107. Oh, so it's very nicely calculating the values in the conditional column by using the parameters. If I change the parameter value to 25%, then it will be drastically increasing and you would see the changes over here. 3912 was there earlier, now it is become 4890. Earlier it was 41 something. Okay. 4100 something and uh, this has become 4800. Okay, this has become more. So this is how we can create a Power BI conditional column using a parameter in the Power BI. So this is also a very useful uh, concept in power b by using the parameter all right so we have created a conditional column of you know and custom column and column with the parameterized data here in the order table we wanted to have something here i just use uh, this data so we have seen how to create a group by uh, concept in power bi so basically this is basically what we call as a pivot okay Power pivot and power on pivot. Using this pivot functions, I have just you know pivoted the data to you know in a club or group by feature. And I would also like to show some few more tricks over here. 
this price which is showing which is having a double dot okay i would just like to change its uh, you know data type so data type is this drop down here you can change the data type of the data and make it more simplified uh, suppose here it is having double dot uh, you know double decimal values i would like to make it rounded off so just click on this price and then change the data type from money to something else so this is uh, having data type with fixed decimal number what i can do is uh, whole number you can make it whole number then it will not have this value so it's become a whole number one two three means it is a whole number it will not have any decimal values if you would change to decimal values then it will be different so for example this tax as well so data type sim simply selected as any i'll just change it to decimal number this become two decimal now what is the difference between decimal and a fixed decimal now the fixed decimal looks more beautiful and more uh, you know intuitive to understand it has a decimal value but fixed means it will have this thousand or comma separators so whenever you want to evaluate or enumerate any long length data or a numeric value with a long length in that case it's better to choose this decimal data type can be a fixed decimal number you would have like this it is having thousand separator to easily understand a value price also can i can i can also give so it would be uh, you know simply when it's a simple number it is not being identical between this order id and this price so you can simply see this order id is also a numeric value this is also a numeric value or this might pose an impression you might have an impression that it is a key field of from other table so when you just make it to fixed decimal value you can have a decimal value but uh, when you say fixed decimal value it will be like this it will have a thousand separator so it will be clearly understood that these values are price not anything else this price in between this price i will not keep this order volume i can just keep it to the left side of this so i can do it pretty easily from here okay that's fine this is way i have just changed this data type of this and here also the dates this is basically date type of data now okay let it be this format okay, let's see what all transformations we can apply on this same here the same way here also number of uh, you know mobile phone subscribers it will not be a currency so it will be uh, like this that's fine mortality is this and also i'd like to create a percentage of this data for example this percentage i think this percentage calculation was goes wrong it is it should be a uh, percentage of total actually okay so it is not evaluating properly and here in this table if you want to just show this data on a transform you know sorted way because you know table the data is not a properly sorted way suppose in that case you can also make it uh, transform uh, transform by sorted way so this is 2007 and also suppose uh, you want to keep this data in the employee table not by employee id but by uh, you know employees from higher to lower higher date or old employees to new employees because in this id you're not able to understand which employee is a new employee or which employee is a old employee so this data are not properly sorted so i can just select this and you know sort ascending if you make it sort ascending so starting from year 2007 to 2009 then 10 and blah 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 and coming into the at last it's up 2015 that means the data is now properly sorted in the table one more trick i would just like to show here say for example conditional column one is uh, say employee if employee id employee uh, id is equals to if column report two if report two then select column employee now let's see how does it looks like say for example reporting authority there's one column i am going to have added over here so what's what's happening enter a number value employee id is report two of course uh, employee id is a number and report two is also number let me look back 
even though it is a number okay report 2 is is become abc its data type is become abc means it is become a character so first of all in order to make it comparison i do have to make a this attribute as numeric so okay why this data type is not taken okay and i just selected this the text data type i'll just change it to whole number it's become a number now i will just add a conditional column and say employee id say, say report 2 is equal to column employee id then select column employee name that means uh, my intention here is to show because it has a ids right here ids you see here employee id and this is the report 2 that means this is the employee eric is highest employee highest ranked employee in this company why because it has a reporting authority is zero and uh, see so there is one person who is uh, this helena is report to eric means eric employee id is one and helena is reporting officer is one and this being uh, this person is also having one so they are both report to this person, particular person eric so my intention is to create one more column which will give their reporting authority names okay, against helena I should be able to show Eric is a reporting officer. All right, so uh, I think it's not able to match. We need to find out some other approach. This is the way it actually matches the data and shows the the expected expected data. But I think this is not able to find out or compare. Give some inconsistency. All right, so this is how these topics are. These are the different type of transformations we have seen. So uh, so that's all for today. Like. We have all uh, seen the various type of transformations like group by uh, and this uh, parameter and then conditional column, custom columns and many other features we have seen. So I hope you would have liked this session. Thanks for watching. Keep following. Bye bye.